What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install some arrow catch hood pins into your car. So recently I've decided to redo the front end of my car. Uh, this includes a, a new tube front front end. Uh, I, I, that's on hold for a little bit until I can get a bender and a, a compressor in here, but until then I've already removed my hood, hood latch, uh, the factory hood latch. This thing weighs a good, I don't know, I'd say four pounds. Uh, my scale doesn't really, it's kind of coarse so I can't really tell, but so far all the weight I've removed from the front has been about 12 to 14 pounds, somewhere in that area. And I'm trying not to put too much back on when I rebuild the front end. I've already got the DOM tubing for it, and I've got these plates that I built. And uh, so far, everything's looking to weigh about four and a half to five pounds, depending on how I bend my DOM tubing. But in the meantime, I need to install some hood pins because I don't have that front latch anymore. So in this case, I'm going to install some arrow catch hood pins. These are pretty common. A lot of guys have them. Uh, you see aftermarket carbon fiber hoods with them a lot. These are the flush mount ones, the ones with the bezel on the top, so it hides your, your cut marks. They do make some other types that are, you know, uh, the heavy duty ones, I think they're steel. These are, uh, these are plastic. Uh, the hood pins themselves are aluminum. I think they, they make those out of like probably high strength stainless. Uh, these are just gonna be to hold the hood shut as you go. The reason I went with these is because when they're unlocked, they have an indicator. A lot of times with hood pins, especially the pin type, if you just pull that pin, you, you can't see over your hood or something, like you're at the track or you've lifted your hood up for some reason, you're about to drive off or troubleshooting. A lot of guys forget to put the pins back in and end up slamming a hood into their windshield. That is something I do not want to have happen and end my day early. So these are probably your best case scenario as far as alarming you that your hood's up. Is it completely dummy proof? No, but uh, you know, it's better than nothing. So in this, I'm going to step you through the process on how to install them. This is a Miata, but this, this is the same process through any car you're going to have. Your hood mounting locations, may are, they're going to be different, of course, but the way I'm going to do it here, uh, you can also do with your car, most likely. I'd say 90% of the cars out there you can do the same process with. Stay tuned, I'll show you how we do it. So let's go ahead and get down to business with this. We're going to do a little bit of jazz hands routine here. Uh, you got to make a template for it. Now, some of the arrow catches that you'll buy actually come with a template on the box itself. The kit that I have does not. If you look on the instruction manual that they give you, I'm sure that that skew or whatever it is will send you to a place with a pre-cut panel. But to pre-cut the templates, it tells you right there, mark around the inside of the fixing plate. So in that case, that's of course this. This is the fixing plate. So this is going to give you a direct outlook of or an outline of what the inner part of this needs to mount inside your hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out tracing this out and figure out exactly where that point is where the hood pin comes through, which is this hole right here. Cue the time lapse. Next thing we're going to need to do is find a location to mount these hood pins. Now most all cars are going to have an area on it where the hood naturally sits on some rubber stoppers. As you can see on this side I've already taken the stopper out. This is what the stopper looks like right here. The hood already has a place marked out for them. What I'm going to do with the hood pin is I'm going to go ahead and install it into the stopper area. Adjust the length after I've got it all installed and I'm going to use this area right here where the stopper is in reference to the hood to make my hole. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. It's, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill from the bottom of the hood because I know that the area that the stopper hits is already marked out on that hood. So I know exactly the center point. Then once I get that, I'm going to take the template over the top where that hole is and I'm going to trace around that area and start cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a, a just a dab of grease at the end of this, or you can use whatever, just something that can transfer the exact location onto the bottom side of your hood. So in my case, I'm gonna use some di dielectric grease. Now this grease is gonna go at the tip. I'm gonna bring it up and through, mark the location of where it hits with that grease, and then center punch there. What 
I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, and I've already done it, I've punched a little bitty center, center hole, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill right through that center. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and keep it the way it was with that hole and I'm just gonna mark my center offset a little bit. Uh, in this case, this thing's gonna be faced like this because I don't have a whole lot of room with the center of that hole up front. Also, that kind of looks tacky. So I think they're gonna be going forward like this. I believe that's installed, I guess, backwards, if you will, because what happens is if you were to say, I don't know, I guess go down a straight at a high mile per hour and this thing was to unlatch itself like that, there is a potential for it to pull itself back with the force of air coming into it. I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, I guess it could, but there's to unlatch that is quite a bit of force. I mean, I really have to press on that. And then to get that thing open at speed, actually that, that could probably happen. That's got a good, a nice little easily latched piece or a, I guess a detent that's pretty easy to overcome uh, but I mean, I don't, I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, if you think there's a problem with it, or if you're on like a dedicated track car or something, maybe you should install them like this. So that way the air, if the thing does unlatch, the air is always going to be pushing back on it. I just don't think there's enough meat there to actually warrant this. So I'm going to do it this way. a Dremel tool for this. Uh, I think you could probably get away with a angle grinder with a small wheel or if you had like a nice uh, pneumatics reciprocating saw or something that'd probably be even easier. I'm gonna have to do some straight line cuts then come back and try and radius this stuff later. I'll probably do it with a drum sanding wheel and a few other bits. We'll see what works best. I've never done this so it'll be a learning experience. Here we go. didn't take too long. It says there's uh, about 11 minutes on my GoPro. So what I'm going to do next is put a drum attachment on here with some sanding wheels or some sanding drums and just start cleaning it up as best I can. Uh, I might have to get in there with a nibbler or something. It's going to be a little bit of work to get that the shape roughed in right. Then I'm going to have to turn it upside down or on the inside and work on the uh, bumper skin from the inside. The inside doesn't have to be as pretty. Uh, well, as perfect I guess. This one needs to be as perfect as possible even though it has a bezel on it I still want to make it look as clean as I can. Mostly just because it's a challenge and then you know I like decent work so let's get to work. So here's a little drum sanding attachment. I'm gonna give it a shot and see if it'll work.
So the drum wheel works pretty well. Uh, well. I'm gonna have to get up underneath and trim the rest of this stuff out. I'll probably use my nibbler for that. But the on the aluminum around here, it gives a real nice finish and it doesn't mess up the paint too much. You can see I slipped a little bit right there. Um, it's really not that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera just cause it's gonna take me at least 30 more minutes. And then once I start doing the underside of it, I'll, I'll bring y'all back. All right, so I'm down at the bottom part now. Uh, I just finished mostly the top. Uh, I've still got some inner workings to do, but now I gotta take an angle grinder to the bottom. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty messy process, it's gonna be pretty loud, so enjoy it. That's what it finally looks like after I'm done. The internal piece still slips right in. Like that. As long as you get enough room to hold it on the, on the uh, upper skin, it should be okay. And then on this side, put it in place and make sure that it falls in between the pin. It's a tight fit right there. So what I've done is that I've eased it out you can see there's a little bit of play in it I've eased it out a little bit and I've pushed this as far back as it'll go and then I use sharpie marker within each of the holes now I'm going to tap and drill each of those holes install the backing plate. So that's it. It wasn't too bad of a process. Overall, it probably took me about six hours. That's uh, me kind of goofing around the shop. You'll see some other people running around, uh, just kind of drinking beer, hanging out. If you have proper tools, you know, like a reciprocating saw would really help. A, a, one with a, a small, thin blade, not like a, a nice, large one for cutting like exhaust pipe or conduit or something. Uh, you could probably cut that out much better and then, and then finish it off with a, a drum attaching or a, a drum sanding attachment on the Dremel or another attachment on a pneumatic. Uh, piece if you have the tooling. Uh, if you're better with body work, you'll probably know some things I did wrong. The I will say the, the drum disc, I went through about 15 of those, but they were awesome. Those things really did a lot of work as far as on the aluminum. On the steel, on this on this bottom plate, and eh, I went through about, I mean, they, they wore out pretty quick. So I'd definitely recommend, you know, maybe a carbide bit or some sort of maybe rock grinding. I, I, don't, I don't really know all the bits that are available with Dremels. I'm sure there's something way more adequate than what I used, but it, it turned out okay. The other thing that I did, I, you know, I did this off camera is I just finished up the area. I, uh, you know, you can leave it raw if you want. It, you might need to, you know, put something over it, like a clear coat or something to keep it from rusting, but I just went ahead and painted it red. The red I have doesn't quite match this old 1990 paint, but uh, it's, you know, it's whatever. I don't really care. Uh, the process as far as that goes, I mean, you can look up other videos on that. I'm not going to step you all through how to paint 
But yeah, so if you like this video, if it was helpful, post up a comment, let me know, hit the like button. I'd love some more subscribers. I got uh, demonetized recently with YouTube's new policy. I gotta hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, and uh, I'm about 400 short, I think, maybe a little less. So if you could, go ahead and subscribe, and then uh, I can get more content like this. It's not a whole lot of money or anything like that, but it did, I mean, it, it pretty much bought these arrow catches and allowed me to make this video. So it's, it's significant in some ways, uh, and it really helps me out, and I love the feedback. I've got a lot of really good stuff from you guys, uh, a lot of concerns, a lot of new ideas for things to do. I mean, this car is a, a complete project, and it's something that I'm just doing on my own for fun. I'm, I'm limited to no race class or anything. It's pretty much just how much money I'm willing to spend on it. The next part with this front end is going to be a lot of fun, too. I got that the DOM tubing to start bending up. I've never used a bender before. The welder I have isn't mine, but it's a nicer welder than what I've got, so we're gonna just try and MIG that stuff on. I'm gonna be making a few bends. I, I plan on bringing you all along the way for this. Uh, I've gotta get a few things sorted out for it, but it should be pretty fun, uh, hopefully. I've got about half the video edited already for it, as far as making these plates, but I still got a little bit more to go, so. If you like it, stick around. I'll show you what I end up doing.